So hello and welcome to the Play Creators Conference. My name is Billy Langsworthy and I'm from Mojo Nation. Um, and I'm delighted today to be joined by PJ Palijo, Vice President of Product Design and Development at NBC Universal, and Trina McFarland, Owner and General Manager at Tinker Teeny. Hello, guys. Hi. Hello, everybody. So um, massive thanks again for, for joining us today. We are here to delve into uh, NBC Universal's approach to working with inventors and, and toy design. Um, but before we dig too deeply into that, I think it'd be a good place to start to find out a bit more about each of you, how you found your way into the, into the lovely world of toys. Um, so PJ, if we start with you, because having a quick deep dive into your LinkedIn, you actually, uh, you studied toy design. You're right from, right from ground, ground zero, you were in. Yes, that was probably about, what, 20 plus years ago. Uh, but yes, I started, um, and this could be a long story, but I'll make it short. Um, this, I started uh, in toy design, actually, in FIT in New York and everything. And so uh, toy design classes, toy design program, everything graduated from uh, FIT and went straight to Mattel for my first job. So flew over from New York all the way to the, the West Coast in California um, and started my career at Mattel. I worked, uh, I worked at Mattel for about five years from like 95 or yeah, 96 to 2001. Uh, worked on properties uh, with like Disney and everything. But, you know, I think the, the one thing I did want to mention is while I was taking classes um, at FIT, I watched this movie called Toy Story in 1995. Um, and that was kind of like, kind of like re-sparked and reignited kind of my love for toys. And, and, and kind of like that was my goal was to, to be able to design toys. And so at Mattel, I had the opportunity to work on Toy Story 2, which was awesome. You know, so that was part of like my dream and everything. And then after my stint at Mattel, um, I had the opportunity to um, join Disney, uh, Disney Consumer Products, and worked there for about 12 years. So I worked on pretty much all the properties and, um, you know, all the toy products uh, within, within the Disney Consumer Products um, division. Um, and then after my 12 years at Disney, um, I decided I wanted to really go back to kind of, and that was licensing. That was all licensing and everything. Um, I really wanted to go back to kind of manufacturing and understand what manufacturing was, you know, in 2015 or 2013 and everything. And so I was like, oh man, I really want to get back into toys and start creating toys again. So I moved from Disney and helped um, start the Hasbro division in Burbank. Um, so I worked in Burbank, um, worked on, you know, again, another dream, worked on Star Wars. Um, so that was, that was amazing. And I also worked on Jurassic World, the first Jurassic World movie that came out um, in 2015. And, and um, that kind of spawned kind of like my interest in kind of Universal and the properties that they had and everything. So um, I had the opportunity to join Universal Brand Development in 2015. Which was which was amazing. It was a, was amazing transition um, because you know I worked on Jurassic World, so I jumped right into Jurassic World um, and helped develop the the products and franchise for that. Um, and ever since 2015 till today, I've been with Universal. So, um, in kind of a nutshell, that was kind of my that's my 20 plus years <laughs> of toys. And we might have even crossed over when I was a, when I was a, not to this is going to sound terrible in terms of not to age you at all, but when I was a kid, Toy Story was my I was. I was four when the first Toy Story came out, so I was all about the Toy Story toys. So maybe there's, <laughs> there might be some stuff you worked on that I uh, that I engaged with as a youngster. Um, <laughs> but tra trainer, in terms of how uh, how did how did you get started and how did this all lead to uh, Tinkatini? Um. Oh, gee, I talked about this in a, another panel, so I won't bore you again with it. But I um I came to LA and wanted to make movies. I ended up working for Disney and. Um, in Disney Toys, and actually, this is where I met PJ. So yes. PJ, th this is not our first rodeo um, engaging with inventors. So I, you know, became exposed to inventors at Disney, and it was, and PJ and I have done this before, um, many, many years ago. So you know, we we've learned a lot. But yeah, Disney, and like PJ, I sort of had the appetite to jump to a manufacturer. So I jumped to Jacks. And then from Jack's Fisher Price Mattel, just managing um, inventor relations. And then I ended up starting my own company, Tinker Teeny. So, and now with PJ again. <laughs> you go, you yes. can't escape PJ. You've tried everything and you can't. I get can't escape from Trina. I cannot <laughs> escape. From Trina. Wherever you go, I will follow. <laughs> 
absolutely and 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 now in terms of your most recent um most recent collaboration i suppose with with the outreach program and the fact that universal is now um, very much engaging with the inventor the global inventor community on on new ideas for, for your properties so i'm interested in in sort of where the origins of this of this program came from when where, at what point did you say you know actually this could be a good idea for us to to directly work with with inventors and pj if we if we kick off with you with that and then we'll yeah. As well. yeah absolutely i think i think you know i think um as trina mentioned you know we've we worked in the past together on you know a a uh, kind of an inventor relationship program that we, we tried to start um at disney and everything um so this was always in the back of my mind um but i was fortunate enough when i joined uh universal that you know our president vince clacious um he had a vision of kind of a proactive licensing division right um, and wherever he goes, he does that. And what that means is like, let's not just be kind of a, a licensor that just pretty much, you know, signs a paper and, you know, you work with different companies and you get products. This is more of like, hey, let's hire industry experts um, and have them come in, get their point of view. So me being from the kind of manufacturing side, get their point of view. How do you drive innovation? And that was his biggest vision. How do you drive innovation? You know, and part of it was kind of like, hey, is there an opportunity to reach out to inventors? And this was when I started in 2015, this was always kind of like, um, you know, on the top of his mind as well as mine on how do we get started on this? So it culminated like maybe after three years and everything, just thinking about it, how can we get into this program? It really came together when um, Dave Voss joined the company and everything because he was he is like part of the inventor community and he um he had kind of put together what vince's vision what my vision was um and really uh came up with this kind of inventor program um that that was kind of the best process that i could even think of um especially hiring trina as our kind of consultant in um, to tap into the um inventor the inventor community and really come up with this process so it, it's always been part of my goal as well as Vince's goal. And now with Dave, he's kind of made it come to fruition, which is great. You know, yep. um, so that's opened up again. I think, I think um, from an inventor community standpoint, it's really opened up the doors for a licensed store um, to really tap into this community um, and drive, like, again, drive innovation. Yeah. And Trina, um, in terms of for any, People from brands watching that might be totally new to you know they might have seen a couple of inventor items with their IP um, uh -huh. might be thinking well, what does an inventor outreach program look like what is it and, and could you could you explain explain through that how how Universal engage with inventors and also where you came along in, in terms of this process sure so um, inventor outreaches look very different from a manufacturer's perspective. So their workflow is gonna be different than a licensor. Um, licensors have um, a kind of a different position in the whole thing, right? Cause they don't do direct, they don't do the business directly with inventors. Um, and there's sort of a middle person between the two parties. So structuring an outreach to sort of address that and offer value in, in other ways to get the relationship going. Um, it was just a different challenge and task to kind of structure a program and really, and, I, and I'm, I'm glad that there was so much education from Dave and PJ and sort of all of our backgrounds kind of coming together. It really took us a year. I mean, a year to put the workflow together and the program and then get feedback from inventors and um, partners in how to refine it and make it work better for everything. And that's one great thing Universal has been amazing at is just being really receptive and open to like, okay, how do we make this program benefit our partners and inventors and drive product for us? Um, and just that refinement process, I mean, it, it, it took us a good year to put together a program that was very thoughtful and kind of called out the things that we're trying to do and being sensitive to things that we're not trying to do. Um, so it's different from, from both, both perspectives. This is the program that, that you know, we executed for Universal is, is very unique. It's not only the program, but it's also the people that are behind it, right? So um, it's just very different that way um, in how focused it is and, and thoughtful. It's really thoughtful. You have me with my RIR experience, 
doing this with PJ before from Disney and then Dave's experience. He has also worked as an inventor himself and manufacturer and licensor. So you have a lot of experience coming together. And it really did take, I think, us as the people to come together and pull these pieces together to make it, to make it work so well. So yeah, Absolutely. And I'm interested because we, we've done um, the old sort of licensed event uh, here in the UK for, for UK brands. Um, and we, you know, you get different reactions from brands. Some people are very much like, you know, that's the toy company stuff. No, thank you. Um, so, yeah. 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 And that's really, so um, I think licensors see things different. Like PJ said, Universal is very proactive. They're not a sit back and let's just sign deals and that's that you know, they're out there being um, aggressive and looking for new product and looking for fresh takes on things um, to drive into their um, portfolio. So every licensor is different. And I think professional inventors, as you know, are like the source for innovation in the industry. And they're a limited resource pool and everybody's kind of trying to compete for their time and focus. So um, you just have to be careful and thoughtful that what you're offering them is, is a relationship and education and a fast pass and, and all those things that, that we offer them. Yeah. So um, there's different approaches. I can say I have recognized through, through Mojo and Chitag, licensors want to engage, like there's a desire there um, because we're all the same industry events and we see each other. So we all, we, we all see each other there, you know, trying to engage in our way. But yeah, I think it just comes down to the, to the company's philosophy and how they approach things and how they value inventors. So yeah. lucky for me, Universal places a high value on inventors. So. Absolutely. And, and PJ on that, on that, I suppose, um, what are the benefits for you in terms of working, working with the inventors? Cause I mean, obviously there might be great ideas, but is there more to it than that in terms of why it's great to be sort of, um, going shoulder to shoulder with it, with this community? Yeah, no, I think, I think the inventor community, and I think I, I love to, I love Dave, Dave Voss's term of how he views the inventor community. He views it as they are kind of like the rock stars of the toy industry, right? Um, so it's like, it's, it's almost like these are the, the, you know, this is the community you want to tap into um, when you want to come up with a innovative and successful product, right? So I think that's kind of a, a big, a big part of it. And I think, you know, like, um, you know, we, we always strive to, uh, to, to look for something new, something different, um, something that will bring our characters to life. Right. Um, so I think that's kind of like a, you know, like a pretty much a, a goal for, for us as well. Yeah. And in terms of, um, in, inventors watching this and thinking, well, what opportunities are there within the portfolio, obviously, you know the portfolio better than anyone. If you were to say, here are some really exciting brands that we've got and here's some exciting things we've got going on with them that you are allowed to tell us about, um, what would be some of the things that you're allowed, you, you can flag up for us in terms, of, in terms of exciting IP within the universal portfolio at the moment? Yeah, no, so, so I think, you know, when I started, um, we were just uh, getting into kind of building franchises, right? Um, especially with Jurassic World. Jurassic World has now become kind of our biggest franchise and everything, Fast and Furious. We, we've built um, as well Trolls when we acquired DreamWorks, you know, um, as well as kind of Illumination. So I think Illumination with, you know, Minions and everything as well, I think that's, um, that's kind of, these are franchises we've built um, and the opportunity to kind of build, um, you know, again, build innovation and build products from inventors. I think that's a big part of it, kind of like the, the understanding of, um, you know, I think knowledge is what we provide to inventors as well. Like we know these properties, these brands, so we can help guide, uh, guide them and everything. I think it's, you know, like, you know, we, we never want to come up with the ideas because that's what the inventor community is for. They are kind of the, the, the masterminds and I would say the Doc Browns of the world, you know? Um, so we love that. And, you know, I think the, the other, you know, again, I look at opportunities for inventors, you know, we don't only see this, I think as a kind of toy um, initiative, you know, universal brand development has not just toys, we have hard lines, we have soft lines, lifestyle products and everything. So this is also something that, you know, we'd like for the inventors to tap into. So I think eventually what we definitely do is, is you know, open this up to, to different categories within universal for the inventors. Cause I'm sure they have ideas, not just, not just for toys, they have ideas for products in general. 
Um, so can we kind of, um, you know, connect them with partners in different categories? I think that's a big opportunity as well. Um, and then I think the last piece of it, I would say is, you know, at Universal, I think this is probably one license, you know, one company, one studio that, that I've seen um, kind of collaborate the most with content creators, right? So uh, when we collaborate with content creators, um, you know, we talk about like, you know, from a, from a toy perspective or from a product perspective, you know, like how can we, how can the story kind of, um, you know, plus up the product, right? Um, with that in mind, you know, we, we talk to them constantly and say, hey, and then if an inventor comes up with like an idea that we see during the process, this would be great if we can put it into content. Right. So, so that's the type of thing that, you know, I think we can, we can bring to um, the inventors in terms of opportunity. Yeah, mm -hmm. really, really exciting stuff there. And, um, and Trina, obviously, in terms of, you know, your engagement with inventors, probably more than anyone else uh, on, on this planet. Anyway, I don't know about the other planets, but um, in terms of, in terms of how an inventor can best present ideas uh, that are based on a brand and based on a property, um, do you think there's there's certain things that an inventor would have to do to create great licensed product that is different from their their day to day invention process? So I have um, I have a unique perspective on this, just out of respect for inventors and their business model and their time and resources, which is always limited. Um, I, this is just my opinion, is for them to just focus on the great product and the great feature and whatever it is. Don't worry about reskinning it. That's sort of our job. So when we bring things in, people like PJ, PJ, and people like Dave, they're toy people. They see it and they say, oh, it does this. Oh, this could be Minions Jurassic. Like, let us do that work. Don't, you know, you don't have to reskin and make a Barbie and do a Minion. And, you know, that, that work is just really not necessary. Um, so that's my best recommendation is for inventors just to focus on creating a volume of ideas features magic let us do the theming and and the uh the positioning part yeah. so um but i can say the most important thing that inventors can do is if you if they're a minions fan they love minions right research what type of products have been done in mean in minions recently so they can get a feel for, okay, like this is the type of features and this is what Minion seems to be about, about laughter and humor. Um, and when they onboard as part of the program, so we'll give them a wish list, which will sort of summarize each of the properties and what the DNA is um, for that franchise. So we'll, we'll give them kind of that framework and guidance so they can pick concepts that are a good fit. And yeah. then we'll take them in and, and look at them and help reposition them and redeem them, so. Yeah. No, that's great, great advice. Um, and PJ, I'm interested in terms of um, how the, the licensing world has changed and evolved over the years, because obviously this is a fairly new, even, even in recent times, this, you know, not every brand is, is taking this approach. So I'm inter interested in how have you seen the licensing world change? And, um, and I suppose, why do you think, uh, you know, brands are starting to, to, to embrace the inventor world in a way that um, hasn't maybe been front and center for, for a while. Yeah, no, I think I think um, it's it's really I think we were talking a little bit about this. I think the entertainment world, which is the studio side and the licensor side, and the toy world has almost become one industry. So you know, I can say and Trina can say this as well. Like if you look at at the different studios, um, you know, within I think globally, um, you'll find you know, a toy person in there, you know, a toy expert and everything. I think we, you know, like I have very close friends in each of the different studios and everything that have come from the toy world and everything. And I think that's where it kind of um, spawns this kind of thinking of proactive licensing. I think, you know, more so um, I do encourage kind of like, you know, these studios to, to tap into the inventor community um, just because again, in, you know, like in, outside of kind of like, um, you know, competition and everything, you know, I think in, in, in a true kind of toy design and toy person's world, you know, our, our goal is to see kind of the, the best products and products you want to remember, right? Um, whether it's, you know, whether it's from Disney, whether it's from Warner Brothers, whether it's from Universal, that's, that's the type of thing I encourage kind of like, you know, anybody in, in the licensing world to, to kind of go after. I think that's, that's something that will, you know, again, it'll be great to see kind of all these inventor products out there 
um, from from any type of characters. Like like I said, I get my inspiration. I, I get my inspiration from um, you know anything that I see that's very creative and innovative. You know, and I get excited about that. So when I see that, I get even more pumped to do something to do something even better. Work with Trina more on this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with the sentiment. So inventors, this is a tough world for them. I mean, there's established firms that have done great and they have, you know, many years of, you know, royalties that are supporting them. But for most inventors that are starting out, this is a really hard road. So the more that, you know, powerhouses like Universal and um, licensors can just give them the education, give them the edge to ideate better against the brands and just sort of expedite their pitching process is great for inventors. And the more that we sort of give to and cultivate this pool of innovators, it, it really just comes back to us. So um, definitely. Yeah. yeah, and what I would say about, you know, licensors and everything in this industry, um, it's like, we know our brands, we know our characters better than anybody out there, right? So I think if you have that knowledge and everything, and you can kind of like give that knowledge to inventors, you know, it'll it'll help support even the you know on the manufacturing, all the toy companies and everything. I think this is something that you know we can work together. I I always like to say like this is probably like you know like if it's if there's a toy company and there is inventors and let's say Universal is here, uh, we're like and and Trina as well, of course. Um, uh, we're like eHarmony, right? eHarmony. We like kind of put everybody together, right? <laughs> I don't know if that exists anymore, but I think, you know, I, that's how I see it. It's like, we're, we're like, like kind of like, we want to, we kind of want to match make um, kind of like inventors and, 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 you know, toy manufacturers um, with, with the knowledge of our products. Yeah. I use the same exact analogy, PJ, but I use match.com, which probably okay. reveals something about us personally. <laughs> Other, but, other dating but services that's... are available. We should say that. We should put that out there just in case there's anyone. We're both married. <laughs> um, and, and also on that, I suppose you guys are giving, you're giving inventors, especially anyone interested in the kids space as well, especially with, um, if I look at your, you know, the recent Netflix deals in terms of bringing the worlds of Jurassic Park and, um, and Fast and Furious into the sort of animation space and, and targeting a different age group and stuff like that. I think, um, the, the, the way brands are evolving and are morphing and are, and are being adapted into different different shows and different treatments and stuff like that, I think, um, uh, I, think I, don't, I don't think there's any, there's no excuses are there anymore. Every property has these toyetic elements to them. They have this, uh, even something like Fast and Furious, which if you look at the, from the, where the first film came out to where it, where it is now, at the first film, toy opportunities around that movie, if, if, they, if there were any, um, it's a very different beast now. Um, so yeah, it's, I think that they, yeah. they yeah. It, absolutely, I think, I think that's kind of the, the beauty of having a, a team and a leader um, that understands this space, right? Um, we know that the Jurassic, like Jurassic Park, you know, um, there are diehard fans, we know Fast and Furious, there are diehard fans that are, you know, adults, right? And these adults are having kids now. So I think, you know, like, um, and they wanna, they wanna live that kind of like story and that kind of adventure um, through kind of like their kids' eyes as well. And they wanna see that and they want their kids to, to, to get into that. So I think that's part of kind of like the, the, the goal is to expand kind of our franchises, you know, from, I, I would say diaper to diaper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how <laughs> Uh, um, and, you know, I think that's kind of like the, the beauty of consumer products. It's, you know, like you, you have a very core, from a toy perspective, you have that core target of these kids that are growing up with our stories. They're watching it, um, you know, on TV now more so than ever um, and everything in, in the theaters whenever that comes back, which is, you know, you know I'm, I'm so excited to, to, to be going to be the first one at, back at the theaters. But, you know, I think the, um, that's kind of part of our goal and we also kind of like understand our fans right we also know our fans and what our fans like as well so i think i think if you think about the the kind of like the, the span of ages that's how we look at kind of like the world today with products yeah and and do you think uh if there's any inventors watching because you guys have you know as well as all the recent stuff you've got a, an archive and a, and a sort of back catalog of movies and stuff which is incredibly rich and there might be fans of old movies or classics that thinks, well, actually, 
you know, where is the board game for that brand or where is the, are you as a company, and maybe this is for Trina in terms of inventors that might be looking further, further back than, than the recent, the recent hits. Um, do you think there are opportunities, you know, we're seeing board game based on classic movies and stuff like that nowadays. Is there, is there scope for inventors to get involved in that side of things as well, do you think? Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't want to disclose anything publicly, but I know Universal is actively always looking at their catalog and how to um, bring things back in anniversary, you know, beloved brands. So those opportunities are always going to cycle. And when they do, we share that with the inventing community and sort of get them inspired and, and inventing. So absolutely. Uh, Trina's, yeah, Trina's absolutely right. I think, you know, we, we do focus, and this is something that, that we recognize our portfolio, I think, you know, spans from the 1930s, 1940s. Um, and, you know, their beloved brands like Universal Monsters, for instance, right? Um, you know, so we always tap into kind of like the content we, we have in our vault. Um, and to, to Trina's point, we look at anniversaries. Anniversaries is a big kind of milestone um, for a lot of these different vault films and everything in our archive. Um, and we, we like to, to think that, you know, we want to kind of support our vault, um, especially with products um, on shelf and everything for, again, for the fans. Yeah, and I'm a big. I haven't. I haven't put horrified there. Just just because you're here. <laughs> I'm a big. Uh, I'm a big nice. fan of the name and the and the old school uh, monster movies. And I'm less fan of that. Um, nice. More and, to come, Billy. More to come. Good. Well, there we go. You've got my email now, so we can we can talk about this. Um, and in terms of um of how the program's actually been so far, um, obviously we you know we're not not delving into anything we can't delve into, but um, but what have been some of the some of the positives to to come out of what you've done with the inventor community so far? Yeah, so <laughs> I was like, right. um, when we started, so we're year two. So year one was really about putting together the structure and the workflow and how this is all going to come together and then communicating it out to inventors and then communicating it out to partners. So it was really kind of establishing the framework and then refining it a little bit just to make sure that it worked well for everybody. Um, we started with just five groups and we did that on purpose, five, five inventing groups as in sort of our pilot year to sort of work out all the kinks and get things working well, um, which we've done. And now we've grown the program to 66 inventors. Um, so, and we're only gonna continue to grow it, especially as we push into other categories and ways to give them more opportunity. Um, and we have, I mean, we can't speak specifics because it's still new, so the products aren't there, but, um, you know, our, our conversion rate with what we bring in the, and the concepts we, that we bring in that result in licenses and deals for inventors is, is on par with any major manufacturer with an inventor relations department. So that's how I gauge the success of the program and the energy and the time that we're spending is, is equaling the output that is, you know, um, benefiting the inventors. So conversion rate is good. I'm happy with that. We're growing the, the group and we are onboarding new universal partners every day. PJ and I are on zoom yeah. explaining what we're doing and how this works and um that's sort of what what we're doing so yeah and, and you know we have to give a lot of credit to our partners our, our our toy company partners and everything um you know participating in this program i think um you know they they see our vision as well and and they obviously always want to kind of uh, create the, the most innovative products out there so you know um you know we are, we are excited. Um, you know, I think what Trina was saying, the conversion rate is really well. So you may see things uh, coming out in 2021 uh, that we're excited about. But again, like we couldn't do this, obviously, without our, our toy partners and the inventors. And I think this is something that um, now our, our president, Vince Clay, is, you know, the, the, the dream is, is coming true. The vision is coming true and everything. So I think we're excited about, truly excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. And, Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that the, um, the partners with Universal have been so, you know, at first when a licensor is saying, okay, we're going to work with inventors, I'm like, wait a minute, that's what we do. Um, so just kind of overcoming that. And they have been so open and sort of just really open to the program. It's like, okay, so how does this work? And, oh, okay, like, this is really smart. This really does benefit us. Um, so it's, it's just been exciting to see you know, partners that really have not really engaged with inventors sort of embrace the program and sort of make those connections, which are new connections for inventors. That's a new doorway that's just open, that we've just opened for them together. So um, for me, it's it's really exciting to um, give these opportunities to inventors, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and PJ, I'm interested, especially as, you know, as VP of, of design and, and, and do you find, I know Phil Sage from Hasbro calls it, I think he calls it creative collisions in terms of these sort of, when, when, you're, when you're bumping into inventors and talking about stuff and things that pop up from that, away from just the, you know, the great ideas which you're, which you're getting and, and, and licensing and stuff like that. Is there something as, as VP of product design, does it, does it sort of refuel your creativity when you're meeting inventors and seeing what outside uh, designers, both in toys and the other categories, are, are doing with your properties that, that is maybe surprising or creative? No, absolutely. I think, I think that's, um, you know, I think it's always great um, to be part of a creative community, right? And I think, um, you know, what, like when this program started, you know, it is amazing to see kind of like, and, and people I've known in the past, you know, I've worked with in the past before, um, you know, that weren't in the inventor community, now in the inventor community that have been like, you know, um, inspiration for me as well. Like, it's, it's amazing. Like, I, I, I look at, you know, some of these um, ideas and these inventions, and it's like, oh, I, I can see it. I can see it on shelf already. I can see like, you know, how this can become this character that I know so well, um, into this great product and everything. So yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I always like to tap into whether it's, you know, the inventor community, whether it's the fashion community, whether it's, you know, it, you know, the toy community, I love to tap into creativity. I mean, that thing's like, I get excited when I see something very creative um, and, and new um, and exciting. And when even in on, on the marketing side, if you even think about like some of the creative marketing that's going out there, Wow, that's like also as well as um, something that gets me excited um, as kind of a creative, um, you know, VP in, in, a, you know, in, a, in a product world and in a licensor world. Yeah. yeah. And for, for me as IR, just to see the cross pollination that happens between these like inventors and licensors and how they energize each other, it's like, yay, go forth, prosper. It's kind it's, of a yeah, beautiful thing. Like you're, you're, it's almost like you're, 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 you, you go back to your childhood and you're playing with your friends. You know, and, and you're, I just you're... scheduled a play date. That's my role. Exactly. I'm like, okay, bring exactly. it together. <laughs> bring your pail, bring your shovel. Let's make make something good. So <laughs> amazing, fun. amazing. And and for anyone who's who's watching this and thinking, well, there's you know a triple threat. You've got the lovely team at Universal. You've got Tinkertini, and you've got obviously great properties in there as well. And and, and they want to get involved, and they want to. They might have ideas for properties, or they might just want to sort of have a deep dive into the portfolio to then come up with ideas. Um, how can any inventors who are watching this that aren't currently uh, involved in this uh, get involved? Sure. So um, they can reach out to us. It's my turn. Uh, info at tinkertv.net. So anyone interested in learning more about the program and getting that kind of insider access to what's coming up and you know inspiring them, they can register for the program and we'll get them onboarded with the current wish list, and then they can start submitting. And I'll start reviewing with, with PJ. <laughs> yeah, stuff. It's, yeah. it's that easy. <laughs> get all those universal monsters ideas in. Um, well, well, guys, thank you so much for, for taking time out. Like I say, I think, um, you know, from the outside, speaking from my point of view, it's an incredibly exciting program, and, and sort of the fact that uh, uh, an IP owner as, as big and influential as Universal is, is embracing inventors in this way is, is, a, is an amazing thing, and, and hopefully, it, it will um, influence and encourage uh, sort of the wider licensing world to, to sort of strengthen their ties with the inventor community. Um, and the fact you're doing it with a, with a partner like Tinkertini, who um, who I'm yet to, I've, I've tried to find people who have any bad words to say about, and I, I can't, I'm trying to track them down, I can't, I can't find anyone. There's probably one, just kidding. <laughs> can't find them, I can't find them. So I think, it's, I think it's a really, really good thing that you're all doing, and um, and yeah, fingers crossed, we, we hopefully encourage more, more inventors to come forward and, um, and, and have great new product uh, launching as, as a result of it. So, um, so a huge thank you, PJ, a huge thank you, uh, Trina, and, uh, and we'll hopefully catch up soon. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Billy, for the opportunity. This is great. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for doing what you do as Mojo, too. What, what you're doing is really important to, to give this platform and for inventors to tell their story. So thank you. It's amazing. You're a star. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Bye.